So can we uh, can we review? Can we, can we move on to something a little more pleasant now? Can we can we re- review some uh, some Ring of Honor? Yes, let's go. Uh, let's do that because because I recently acquired. Uh, well, I thought I acquired five uh, Ring of Honor shows. I apparently I, I actually acquired four. So we're going to be having a little conversation with them about that uh, tonight. The shipping department, not the company. Yeah, Company's the shipping great. Department. The shipping department made a um, boo boo. They made a boo-boo with my order when they sent it to the wrong location. But anyway. I still got my order. So. But uh, uh, one of the shows I recently acquired was Glory by Honor 9, which is the most recent Glory by Honor. Now, we watched Final Battle, which was amazing. I believe we reviewed that, didn't we? Uh, we um, didn't review it. We did oh, a we, pregame we did a show. pregame show. Okay. Well, we should review Final it. Final Battle was good. That was our... Final Battle was amazing. That was our, um, that was our post-game show. Glory by Honor 9 was the, the, the uh, I think, review before Final Battle. Uh, featuring, among other things, the uh, debut of Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin in Ring of Honor in a match against the ROH Tag Champs, Kings of Wrestling, and the uh, crowning of new ROH World Champion uh, in Roderick Strong. And we also had the double chain match with, uh, with G- Generico and uh, Generico and Cabana versus Steen and Carino. Yeah. Um, but the the first match. Uh, on the card uh, was shit. No, it wasn't really shit. <laughs> it, was, what, it was shitty. What was it? it was a shitty match. I can't remember now. Wait, grab the DVD it's over there. While well, I repair our makeshift Oh, yeah, microphone. yeah. That, that's oh, eight card stud tournament. No, it wasn't the eight card stud tournament. That was on the <laughs> crappy show. Um, sorry, having sorry. Vietnam like flashbacks to the crap I've had to watch. I got, I got thrown because the. the Opener for the show was the the two part. Was I the, trusted you to carry this video? You uh, started off not carrying shut this video. Your face. Um, sure. Yeah. No. Uh, op- opener was Kenny King versus Jay Briscoe, and then immediately after that we had uh, Rhett Titus versus Mark Briscoe, um, and this was really good. It was. I was, it was yeah. It was a really good way of putting over the tag division and this feud in the tag division without necessarily repeating the tag match they'd already had. It was a two-match series, and so, um, you know, obviously as soon as King went over uh, Jay, you knew that, that, that Mark was going to beat Titus. I like but there was one thing that kind of surprised me, and I think it caught us both off guard at first, was that the one match literally led right into the second match. There was no yeah. wrestlers go back and two more wrestlers come out. The, the next two contestants... Ran out to the ring and started their match well, right away. Well, Titus actually came out earlier to try and interfere. As right. I and, well, and then, and then and then the two guys from the first match stuck around and supported their partners. Yeah. So that whole element of competition, best man win, you know, that kind of that spirit of, of battle came out in this match. Really well done. Really different. D- different thing. Not 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 done terribly often. The way they did it was not done uh, is, is not done often. Um, you know, Kenny King made it. I, as I recall, he pretty much made it through the match without a box spot, which is good for him. Um, he Not did, to say he's a crappy wrestler, but he just he, he always seems to have one or two flubs yeah. during um, a match. Titus had one. <laughs> Titus yeah. screwed one thing up. So you know, I mean, the All In Express still is not there yet, but they're getting they're much better than they were, and they're getting there. Um, and uh, we're also forgetting the, the the best spot during that match. The You Killed Kenny spot. It will go down in history as the You Killed Kenny spot by order of me. Um, so As supreme ruler of the universe. That's right. Uh, ba- basically, it, it wasn't anything that, that special except for the fact that uh, Jay Briscoe elevates Kenny King and Kenny King comes down on his head and the crowd starts chanting You Killed Kenny. Almost instantly, too. Yeah, it was pretty good. Somebody had a good idea there. Anyway, um, really good little two match series, good stuff. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And after that, we had uh, Balls Mahoney and Grizzly Redwood against the Embassy of the Necro Butcher and Eric Stevens. Not much to talk about here except for the fact that uh, Grizzly Redwood looks like Hornswoggle's like retarded. He looks like a redneck failed uncle. abortion. Is what he looks like. He's got this like bizarre, and he was wearing these trunks that made him look even more awkward and weird. It, it was a uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, Gr- Grizzly Balls Red- Mahoney was entertaining. Yeah, but you know Balls Mahoney has the best theme music ever, and um, <laughs> the only song anyone named Balls should come out to. Yeah, uh, uh, Big Balls by ACDC. The fact that that uh, that uh, 
Other things of note are the fact that Ring of Honor was able to spell balls with a Z instead of an S and thus keep his name. Uh, instead of, you know, say, I don't know, naming him Cajones and spelling that like K A H. Well, we we were not going to talk about TNA for this video, okay, so let's okay, not let's not go there. Also, the uh, the right team went over in Embassy and Necro Butcher, even though I don't. And like, the right guy got I, the pin too. Yeah, Stevens got the pin, and I did I say Embassy and Necro Butcher? <laughs> um, Eric Stevens and the Necro Butcher, part of the Embassy. Uh, I'm not a big Necro fan, but I'm a big Stevens fan, so good job there. Um, See, Kevin Steen and Steve Carino against El Generico and Colt Cabana. Great match. Yes. A lot of good stuff going yes. on here. You know, this whole this whole feud was was a big uh, big emphasis on the hardcore. So it, a lot of brutal, brutal stuff. A lot of blood. A lot of people going through tables. A lot of chains. A <laughs> couple of the spots, if I had to find a criticism, and, and it's really hard to do, there were a couple spots that just seemed um, uh, really, they, they didn't flow quite as well, like with Cabana being uh, tied up in the ropes with the chains, and it just seemed like Carino was waiting way yeah, too we long to finally kill that, him. Yeah, we were laughing about that, because Carino was, I'm, I'm going, will you just hit him with the chair already? It like, really felt like the you know the bad guy in the Bond <clears throat> film telling you exactly what he's going to do before he does it, and oh, it gives him just enough time to be stopped. And like, I, <laughs> I wanted to see Carino nail him, frankly. I, I, yeah, I, I like, kind of wanted you, to, to watch that. Can we have the payoff for this spot? Like, <laughs> wail on him, but you know, whatever. Never, it never um, actually came. And then we, the element of, of Carino's kid, Carino's kid being getting, inserted in the match. And then the crowd chanting and kill the kid, which I had kind of felt was kind of like, uh, I'm not really behind you on that one, guys. <laughs> I'm not going like, to support you, live audience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, d d d please don't murder the 14-year-old child, or however old he was. Although I'm also not in favor of Kevin Steen kissing the 14-year-old child on the mouth, either. Yeah, well, Steen's you know, a little, d you know, a little I don't, out there. I don't but. mind Kevin Steen doing his demented thing because he's doing his demented thing. He's licking the blood off his hand and he's he used Carino's it off. blood. Carino volunteered his own forehead, and <laughs> Steen uses Carino's own blood to write "Mr. Wrestling" on a steel chair with Generico's mask. That yeah. that just sums up just how sadistic Kevin Steen's character and I, is. And I love the development of that. So the storyline was developed. Uh, uh, Carino tapped out to end the match. Uh, he tapped out to the Billy Goat's Curse. Um, Which I but, liked. I liked that, that Cabana picked up a win in this feud. Yeah. Um, but right after that, uh, Steen and Carino attacked. And uh, uh, that this was when Steen grabbed Generico's mask. Um, and then Generico, Cabana kind of covered him up and they retreated. And and uh, Steen... Steen put the mask on the chair and wrote Mr. Yeah. Wrestling on the chair in blood. So Just like on the t-shirt. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, yep. you know, great continuation of the feud and uh, highly enjoyable. I understand the people who ordered uh, this pay-per-view on iPay-per-view actually got part of this match cut out, so I, w I was happy to, to see the whole thing here. Um, we had uh, uh, another embassy thing. Uh, Eddie Edwards defended the, wor the world television title against Sean Davari uh, in what was really good. I mean, I, you know, not not – show stealing but it was well, good it, um, one of the points that i drew from this match is that davari uh when he's booked as this kind of a big guy and put up against bigger opponents uh he just doesn't come off as as uh very good uh he's not very entertaining he's out of his element but when he's facing guys that are x division style wrestlers I like Eddie um Edwards. yeah he he comes off as just as capable as anybody else and 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 totally serviceable in that role. Now, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily see him ever being a world TV champion for the company, but I certainly see him putting on good matches with the, with the same caliber talent. And, and and so I applaud Davari, and at the same time, Eddie Edwards, man, just uh, he is so good. It was it, we were talking about it during during the the match that Edwards was having. Is that it, while Davy Richards has jumped to the top of the card, you know, his American Wolves tag partner has actually maybe even accomplished more than Richards has, uh, you know, in the same amount of time and quietly become a very viable contender, you know, near the top of the ROH card. And he's done a great job. Yeah, he's – Eddie Edwards is is really excellent. The, the crowd is – fans are solidly behind him. Um, you know, he's – he his reign as a television champion was absolutely excellently booked. And overall, he's just becoming – more and more, he's becoming one of their main attractions. Yep. Um, so quietly you know, too. I, I, yeah, I like that. It's, it's very, uh, very low key, but at the same time, 
everybody in the crowd knows they like Eddie Edwards, and they're fully supporting him yeah. at this point. And the great thing about it is, is that the the more the more support he gets on his own, and the more support Richards gets on his own, the more the crowd loves something like what's happening in our take center stage, which is them getting back together as the Wolves to take on Hobbs right. and Benjamin. Right. So, and it, we're not going to see them as you know the Wolves. Oh, the tag teams back together. It's no, the Wolves, it's you know, played night. by Richards and Edwards. You know, getting in the ring and you know putting on a show that they no longer do and making it a special attraction. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not going to take away from their both, single run. Uh, they're both faces run. now, so they exactly. have to keep yeah. up being both faces. So it's not going to be the Wolves of Wolves because the Wolves were heels. Anyway, um, uh, we had Austin Aries versus Christopher Daniels, which I was very excited about. Um, you know, the match wasn't bad. No. It, it wasn't great either. It was kind of dull, honestly. Um, I think part of the reason why I felt it was kind of dull is that it kind of lacked a, a purpose. I, they tried to give it one with Aries putting on the promo right before the match and uh, the announcers when you could hear them doing a yeah. you know fairly decent job of talking about where these two guys have been and where they are now and how it's you know it's kind of a grudge match. They, I mean, they titled it what Battle of the Best. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, they they definitely tried to, to give this match a purpose, but. It. But, but it just kind of lacked, you know, it just lacked that extra element that, that was necessary, whether it be number one contendership or yeah. or some sort of feud. There was no real feud to build up to this match either. So It wasn't. It didn't really help that, that Aries started things off by saying to Daniels, hey, let's steal the show, and they really completely did not steal Probably the show. Probably didn't steal um, the show. But, you know, that being said, the match did not stink out the place. Both those guys are, are professionals and are, are not going to stink out the place no matter how. And what that match was still better than anything you're going to see in other companies right now. Well, yeah, Florida, for example. Um, and, you know, the top rope Angels Wings was really cool. So Yes, the, the finisher to that match was great. Um, and, of course, we had the, uh, the Kings of Wrestling against the debuting Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas in a non-title dream tag match, which a lot was of ways, amazing. In a lot of ways, this was supposed to be, you know, th- this was billed as the, the match to buy the, the card for, and, and yeah. it lived up to it. It did. It was, you know, there's really not much else to say, except that this match was absolutely astounding. The crowd was loved, the crowd loved it. You could tell that Haas and Benjamin loved being there, and and, and I loved uh, I loved that the audience was giving equal respect to both teams. That uh, the new coming team got tons of respect because they came to Ring of Honor, graced Ring of Honor with yeah. their presence, and humbled themselves being a part of the show and really really letting letting things go and being a great part and great element. While at the same time that the audience said you know said, hey, Kings of Wrestling, we still care about you. You're the champs, and we're going to respect you because you've earned it. Yeah, and it also wasn't your typical tag match. I, I no, love, I love the bit where I love the bit where Haas was getting beat up, and he finally makes the hot tag to Benjamin, and Benjamin comes in, and the hero does the low bridge, and Benjamin goes out of the ring. Yep. And then Benjamin gets beaten up yep. for a while until Haas makes the hot tag. It was really great stuff. Really just um, – Lots of chemistry between the two teams. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Good, 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 fantastic match. Um, so, you know, not much else to say there. And then, of course, there was the uh, the World Championship match featuring the departing Tyler Black against Roderick Strong. Most people figured that, uh, yeah, that was great. Um, most people figured that, that Strong would win, and he did, um, because Black was going to WWE. But I, but the match was really good. Really, they, really good. Everybody going in knew where this had to go. Because the audience, the live audience, the people who ordered the pay-per-view, the people who actually care about Ring of Honor, all knew that Tyler Black was on his way out. Yeah. But and, you know, they and, still and managed to put on... They had Black cut the promo, saying, I'm, I'm leaving. They, I'm taking they this still, with me. To, to Connecticut. Yeah. They still managed to put on a match that made you think maybe it, it, it wasn't going to go that way. That maybe they would consider allowing Black to win that final yeah. match. Or, and, and they still they put that element of doubt in during that match. And both competitors, Black and Strong, worked a th- they worked their butts off in this match. They worked a great match. And it paid off. It, you really got your money's worth in this match, despite honestly knowing where things were going to go when it when all was said and done. And it was the first DVD we owned that actually had an ROH World Title change <laughs> hands on it. So it's about time we do that, actually. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we had the after that we had the return of Homicide, which, you know, yay. Awesome. And the crowd loved it, so... <laughs> Fantastic. Glory by Honor 9 is amazing, and I highly recommend it to anyone who calls himself a wrestling fan. 